I am your presenter, Adam Joy, for the current RPA news. And today, on the 12th of December 2022, we have uh, stories from the Standard newspaper. And those stories, uh, the IEC rejects Jamais request. Recognize Fabaka Tomoja, the lead APRC, as legitimate one. Government breaks silence on shooting of foreign residents. Ben Suda says he has not declared intention to become UDP flag bearer. Sabali is the new campaign manager for UDP. Those were our top stories on the Standard newspaper, and now we read the news in details. And today, the IEC rejects Jamais' request. Recognize Fabaka Tomoya, the lead APRC, as legitimate one. The Independent Electoral Commission has rejected former President Yaya Jamais' request to recognize Fab Yaya Tamba, lead fraction, as the true APRC, and instead announced that Fabaka Tomoya, the lead executive, is the legitimate one. The former president had personally written to the Independent Electoral Commission advising them to recognize Tamba lead APRC fashion after his expulsion of Fabio Tomonjada and others, who supported an alliance with President Barros MPP. Last October, the faction loyal to Jame wrote to the IEC asking it to recognize and address issues dealing with the APRC as a party. With two rival factions ahead of this month's Congress, when asked about the letter, at the time, the IEC chairman said, he cannot remember receiving such a letter from the Jame APRC faction but promised to make a follow-up. However, in a letter responding to a Tomoja the lead executive request to hold a congress under the ticket of APRC seen by the standard, the Electoral Commission chairman, lead uh, Ali Umar Jai said, I write to acknowledge receipt of your letter of the 26th of September 2022 pertaining to the above subject matter and to inform you that your existence as a legal registered and recognized APRC is what is obtained within the record of the IEC. You shall therefore be acting in accordance with your law when you hold your National Congress on the, on the stipulated date mentioned in your letter. The IEC letter did not mention any other group of factions related to APRC. Last year, the former government leader announced he has dissolved the Fabricator lead executive and replaced it with a new executive. He followed that up with a letter addressed to the IEC which was first published by the Senate recently. In that letter, Jame wrote, I write to inform you that, based on the powers vested in me by the constitution of the APRC party, of which I am party leader, supreme leader, and chairman and flag bearer, by resolutions of the 2015, 2018, and 2021 party congress in Kanelai, Biam, and Serekunda, I hereby write to officially introduce to you the members of the new National Executive Committee the, that is the NEC, sometimes referred to as the Executive Committee EC, of my party, the APRC. I have been the founder, the leader, and the national chairperson since APRC inception in 1996. Jame further wrote to the APRC general membership in consultation with him, decided following meetings on the 8th and on the 14th of October 2021 to relieve all former executive members of the party from, his, from, this, from their positions. The Yaya Tamba faction has accused the IEC of not treating the APRC issue with fairness. That was the story on the Standard newspaper regarding the IEC versus uh, Fabaga Tomojata lead and the fractions lead by Tamba. And government breaks silence on the shooting of Fony residents. That's another story again on the Standard newspaper. And it says, for the first time since the first four residents of Fony were shot dead across the border in Casamas. The Gambia government yesterday issued a statement expressing regret over the death and foreign and vowing to investigate the circumstances. In the latest incident Friday, the three young men were killed by drones in Casamas while a fourth survival with serious injuries. Last month, a man from Jifanga village was killed in a similar circumstances while his, his companions sustained injuries. The incident led to the calls by National Assembly members of Fony for the withdrawal of Senegalese forces in the area and allegations that government targets Fony people with wrongfully termination. For the first time since this incident, the government yesterday issued a statement saying, in the week of a recent press conference conveyed by National Assembly members mainly from the Fony constituency on the 2nd of November 2022, 
the Gambia government wished to clarify serious unfounded allegations raised by the representatives. Among a litany of complaints, the honorable members raised concerns over the presence of academic forces in Fony. Investigation into the deaths of certain individuals, particularly the death of one young Baji, and the unsustainable allegations of unfair termination and dismissal of Fony citizens from key civil civil and public service positions as well as targeting of people from Fony by the various commissions of inquiry. The Gambia government takes this statement seriously and wish to restate, to restate for the benefit of the five National Assembly members and the public that the security and, in, and territorial integrity of the country are paramount. The presence of the economic forces across the country, the Fony region inclusive, is necessitated by genuine security concern exacerbated by a porous southern border. The economic have been instrumental in maintaining peace and security as the Gambia navigates its very sensitive transition. The government takes allegations of lost and all human rights, human life very seriously and is committed to carrying out all necessary investigations to ascertain the circumstances. With regard to the reports of the shooting of the Yankuba Baji, investigation have been confirmed that Mr. Baji died across the border in the Kasama regions of Senegal. The late Mr. Baji was non Gambian registered refugee with UNHCR and has resident of Jifanga village. Meanwhile, the Gambian authorities are closely working with their Senegalese counterpart regarding the case. However, the National Assembly member for Councillor Almami Jiva shared documents with Kerfat who purported lead to the Gambian birth certificate and ID cards of the victim. There are talks going around saying these people kill our Senegal, our Senegalese and they have re re uh, refugee cards. Here is the evidence that these people are Gambians. I have the birth certificate of Demakoli, the ID card of Suleimani Koli, and the ID card of Alaji Manga, Honorable Jiba told Kerfat. The standard two has seen documents purported refugee registration card of death meant like online, leaked online. While the chief of councillor Ali Nyasi has called on the people of Fonyi to handle the crisis with calm and promote peace in the area. He also purported the versions that the men went into Casamas to fetch firewood but de were declined to say what they went there for until the right time. Asked whether the victims might have been engaged in wrongdoing in Casamas, Almami Jiba told Kerfadus the brunch program that even if the victims committed a crime, there it, is, it does not warrant them to be sought on site. I think the reasonable thing would have been to arrest them and bring them to justice, he argued. That was the story from the standard newspaper about the phony killings. And now we go to the uh, Ben Suda says he has not declared intention to become the uh, UDP flag bearer. And that story on the standard newspaper, Mayor of Kanifin, Ben Suda, uh, Talib Ahmed Ben Suda, has said he has not expressed intention to become the flag bearer of the United Democratic Party in 2026 for a presidential election. Mr. Ben Suda, who changed his positions as the National Organizing Secretary of the UDP, as last week Congress in January, he spoke to reporters about much rumor ambition to replace Dabo as party leader. No, I don't. Our party leader is still in act and still active and has not shown any signal that he is going to leave at any point in time. But if an opportunity arises, I will then start my intention, is there my intention at that point in time, but as of now, no Ben Suda said. Mr. Mayor Ben Suda admitted that this is aware of, he is aware of such rumors, but he is not surprised because that is the nature of plotting. In plotting, people speculate and analyze one's movement and try to create a trend. It is the nature of plotting, he said. I believe I have a business person first and I think as a business person, I always want to make sure I utilize the time, my time well. That is why I work to maximize and with goals and objectives. That is my nature. But some people, of course, think that being a politician, I am doing this because I am looking for something. That is not entirely the case. Hard work is my nature, Ben Suda added. Mayo said he prefer understands that in politics, he perfectly understands that in politics people can create conspiracy theories. So I will accept anything thrown at me, but it take, but take it from me. If, for example, I want to be a flag bearer, I would hide. I would not hide it. I will come out and say that I want to be the flag bearer. So what is the bent? 
peddled around is just conspiracy theory and I want to focus on my job as an as organizing secretary of my party and mayor of KMC which is in fact my number one priority. I don't like to venture into pity talks here, he declared. And now we move to uh, Mahmoud Sabali's new position as campaign manager for UDP. Mahmoud Sabali is the new campaign manager of the United Democratic Party. His accession came after Congress delegated Delegates negotiated an agreement between him and the previous holder, Karafa Sonko, adverting an election for the position. That was just a precise story uh, from the standard newspaper about Maud Sabari intention to uh, his uh, new positions as the campaign manager for UDP. And those were our top stories. And now I say goodbye to you on the current affairs. See you tomorrow for more news. Thank you all.